Good afternoon, and uh, today is Monday, November 28th. The time right now in Singapore is 12, uh, sorry, 1.21 p.m. in the afternoon. And uh, for those who are still celebrating uh, Thanksgiving, thanks, uh, belated Thanksgiving, and uh, of course, today is Cyber Monday. There's still a bit of shopping online. Uh, for those who are still busy shopping, today is one last day for you to do the shopping. And over the weekend, we can see that although it is a shortened week because of the Thanksgiving holiday, Thursday the market was closed, Friday the market was only half a day of trading. So basically, the market actually managed to actually edge higher. In terms of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we have already broke through the August high of 34,281 to a new high for the month at 34,386.5. So we still have about three trading days to go, including today, uh, before the month ends. So there is every possibility we can see the market challenging the 35 even levels. Okay, uh, so this is basically uh, the market wanting to uh, go up. There's a bit of a portfolio uh, balancing going on. Uh, so this is to be expected towards the year end because fund managers want to be paid their bonus. So they need to make sure that the market stays elevated to get a good pricing for their portfolio. So uh, this is basically window dressing. So we will hope that this market can actually sustain a little bit more. But uh, realistically speaking, I think going into December, maybe we can see a bit of uh, uh, buying going uh, carry forward from this month. Uh, but the start of 2023 could be a different thing altogether. So be careful about changing this market ever higher, okay? Over the S&P 500, we can see that the, although the market have registered a new month high, at uh, 4034 uh, this is not unexpected because previously i was mentioning that there's a lot of trading activity in the option markets uh, for the 4000 strike price for the future uh, for the options traded in uh, cme so you can see that those uh, speculators has been trying to gun uh, this market to go above 4000 and they managed to do that and uh, friday last friday was actually the expiration day for the options so the market uh, for the time being has finished its round of buying so the question is this is a new week can it sustain beyond uh, the last week's high at 4034 the nearest barrier to higher prices obviously will be the september high which is 4119 so like i said we still have three more days before the month end there is possibility the market will gun for the september high whether or not it can stay above that level is another story if you manage to go beyond but cannot close beyond that level and come back down that will cause a reversal in the market going to december so do watch out for the next three days of trading uh, Nasdaq 100 obviously is lagging far, far behind, although the market managed to recover, but it was nowhere near, it did not even uh, manage a new high for the month. The month high was at 12,024, that remains intact, and uh, this market has basically has no enough momentum to go higher. So I think if there's going to be any sign of weakness, it will likely come from this index itself. So keep an eye out for weaknesses. Um, in the NASDAQ 100. Over in Asia this morning, we can see the uh, Asian market as far as uh, the Hang Seng Index concerned, it pulled back. Uh, it went below uh, the 50% mark of this initial rise. So now the market is at 16,833 in the morning. This is the day low so far. We will see whether in the afternoon session there will be any further weakness going forward. Obviously, over the weekend, we hear a lot of new news uh, that came in and say that there's gonna, uh, there has been a bit of a protest going on from uh, cities that were locked down, uh, residents in, uh, in Guangzhou, in Xinjiang, uh, uh, in the street protesting uh, this severe lockdown, and uh, this could easily get our hands. So it has created the negative sentiments going into Monday's trading. So it was no surprise that Hang Seng actually came off uh, so we have to keep on monitoring the situation in, in China as to whether they are managed, uh, they manage to control this uh, unrest uh, among the citizens because of this severe lockdown we actually have been on, uh, ongoing for quite some time now and the market seems to be uh, very bearish because of this major factor here. Uh, of course, that also spilled over to the Shanghai Composite Index. The weakness that we saw this morning saw a new low for the month uh, at 3000 034 okay so now the market has unfolded in a technical three-way pullback so if the market can stabilize anywhere around the 3000 level it may actually be a base for the market to propel higher because my medium term outlook is for the market to recover the 3226 to 3281 so this this time uh, this range of prices remains my medium term uh, target for the time being okay and uh, over in nikkei we can see the market also pullback 
but it wasn't that severe. Market is basically being supported by this very clear support line here uh, in the daily time frame. So unless this market takes out this uh this support line, then obviously the market will be in the period of weakness. For the time being, I think the market is just treading water, not wanting to trigger anything important. So we will have to keep on watching how the market reacts in New York itself. Okay. Tonight and tomorrow night will be key. So keep an eye out for what happened on Wall Street. Over in the currency market, we can see that the dollar continue to correct. And the market, uh, dollar yen actually has uh, almost a high at 152. And it has been pulling back since. So this high here has been done in, uh, in the last week of October. So we are already one month into this corrective pullback. And it doesn't look like it's, it's over yet. The market is unfolding likely to be in a five wave pattern. And if this is the case, 133, which is the low trader on November 15th, may not be able to hold. The market may actually take out the 137. And then once that is done, there could be a, a, a more robust pullback uh, back to 142. So my immediate target is 136, half there about. Okay, I'm basically holding short position uh, in dollar yen and now hope to be able to buy back at 136, half there about, and then wait for another rebound. Over in sterling, I think the market still have enough momentum to go higher because over the last few days, although it is a shortened week, we do not see the market wanting to come off in any big way. So there is every possibility this market will continue to edge higher and maybe even take out the August high of 122.93. Okay, so we have to watch this level over here. Same thing, so long as the dollar continues to uh, to consolidate and correct downwards, uh, all the other major currencies has a chance to actually rebound. And over here, we can see that the dollar, uh, the euro dollar, seems to be correcting. Uh, what looks like possible a five wave rally. So if this is the case, I think the market will seriously challenge the 1.0615 levels. Okay, and uh, that will mean the market will have a five wave rally followed by a more like uh, maybe a three wave pullback before it uh, give us a new a new pattern to follow. Okay, so for the time being, just stay long on euro for the time being uh dollar cap for although this morning the market actually wanting to go up okay but i think the market upside is about 135 okay 135 i think this is the breakout of prices and in fact i think i will be very keen to uh to sell short i have actually placed my sell limit order into the market and hoping the market can actually extend higher beyond last week's high of 134.95 okay uh 130 135.50 to 136.20. I think that that level seems to be a good level for me to see if the market give me a reversal. And if it does, then I think shorting seems to be uh the my plan uh, basically. Okay. Uh over in the energy markets, crude oil prices continue to uh to to fall back. And uh, uh last week we did I did a couple of trades in uh crude oil mostly was okay except for the last one that i tried to sell short i put my stop too close and i was stop up before the market comes back down so this was a little bit of a regret i learned my lesson not to put my stop too near uh so the market went out to as low as 73 dollars and 82 cents this morning and we will have to see whether the market can actually stabilize and see if there's going to be a new pattern for now i have no i have no position i will have to take it uh as it comes over in the precious metal market uh Metal actually went up to a low 1,725.20 20 cents on uh on I think Tuesday. Okay, last Tuesday and the market stabilized. I went back to re-establish my long position. Overall, I'm still holding on to my original long position. It was last established on October the 7th, and I'm holding on to the original long and just adding new position uh, around the $1,730 level. Okay, so the market has gone up a little bit, and I think the market can actually challenge the 1,008 levels. Okay, if the market goes up to 1,008, maybe I will uh I will buy, I will close out this latest long position and then just keep my original long position and see what happened next in the silver market the market has been also been going up uh although the market peaks at 22 dollars and 25 cents but it does look like this is a three-way rally and it could be in the mean in the near in the very near term maybe the market can actually pull back a bit lower maybe closer to the 20 dollars so if it if that comes to being then maybe i will look for buying opportunity because i still believe that overall the silver market is going to be due for a major short squeeze going into the end of the year end contract in the futures contract so we have to watch out for this move here uh over in the crypto market uh there seems to be a bit of a rebound going on let's go down to the 16 minutes time frame in the one hour time frame we can see that the the crypto as far as bitcoin is concerned there was a bit of a bounce okay went up to one just under one thousand six hundred eighty dollars uh no one thousand sixteen thousand dollars 
$16,800 and then pull back this morning. So by and large, I think because of this rebound, for whatever reason, I think the market is doing do a recovery. Potentially, the market can go down to $17,360 thereabout and, and we'll see the potential for another leg of the upswing. It is still very much in play. I have already gone long in the Ethereum. I have not been touching crypto for more than two months now. Uh, but last week I saw this spike up. Okay, we watched quite late because when I saw this move, it was already up here. So I basically I went long around around somewhere around uh, one thousand one hundred and seventy dollars. So the market went up to twelve. Uh, 1,231, I did not take profit. And this morning, the market came back to my price and a bit lower. So by and large, I do see that this Ethereum, if it's maintain this current momentum, there is every odds that it can go up to 1,003. I, actually, I'm, lo I'm looking to take profit at 1,003. Uh, $1,300, okay? Uh, I'm placing my uh, limit order at 1,295. So if the market can go up there, I will think I will just close my position and just watch, okay? Ripple uh, had a good day. The market has actually have a rebound. Uh, red, relatively speaking, it's actually quite large from almost 35 cents to 40, 41.87 cents before it pulled back this morning. By and large, I do see that the potential for another rally remains possible to 44 cents to 46 cents. Okay, so between this level here, I think there's a possibility the market can actually come back one more round. Uh, Binance Coin had a good run. Uh, from near $250, it went up to $317.60 before it pulled back this morning. And before this morning pullback, it looks like it's going to continue higher. But now that you have pulled back, it's still okay. I think the market can, can still go up to try the $355. The potential for another one more leg higher remains a possibility here. Now, Dogecoin, uh, there were some rumors in the marketplace about some kind of uh, uh, cooperation between Twitter uh, and uh, Vitalik, okay, uh, who is actually the inventor for uh, the Ethereum uh, uh, blockchain. So basically, I think they're going to use this Dogecoin to be as the uh, choice of payment currency. So if this rumor comes to being, then of course, there will be more potential for the Dogecoins to go even higher. Of course, this is a main coin favored for some reason by uh, uh, Elon Musk. And uh, if this rumor turns out to be true, then of course this uh, there's potential for the Dogecoin here to go even higher. For the time being, this uh, this this token here is basically a mean coin. There's no much of utility going forward. Cardano has uh is basically pretty weak. There's no news in this market. They actually favor Cardano right now. So the market actually rebound together with the rest of the other coins. But this morning the pullback pulls back a bit deeper than uh, the other coins. You can see the market now is almost very near to the all-time low here. So we have to watch this coin here. There's no real news in the market. So if we can avoid this coin, do, uh, do consider avoiding this coin. Uh, the other one is, of course, the Solana. Solana has been severely sold off uh, because of the FTX fallout. And uh, now the market actually recovered back to over $15, followed by another pullback this morning. So if this is the case, I think there's one more leg possible uh, in the high side, uh, maybe at $16.80. So this move here, maybe to be uh, in a short run, may see another leg higher. For the time being, this is all I have for you. Then uh, until tomorrow, we will see you again. Bye-bye.